communities. Some areas, like the mountain communities, are going to get in this system as much as they would normally get in an entire year. So this is definitely something that we are taking very seriously here. Here, we're starting to see some of it. It's Sunday, what's the date? It's Sunday, August 20th, and I'm getting ready to head out on a run. Going for 10 miles today. One thing is though, Hurricane Hillary is on its way to the LA area, Southern California area. So time is definitely of the essence. It's not supposed to get, like the eye of the hurricane is what they're saying, is not supposed to get here until like 5 p.m. So I feel okay to go out and get this, get this run done. It is raining, but we do live pretty close to the beach, like 10, 15 minutes away, but only like five miles from the beach. Yeah, I have never been in any sort of tropical storm, hurricane morning ever before. Of course, I've experienced like crazy weather just living, growing up and living in Michigan with <clears throat> like blizzards and winter storms, but this is definitely a new experience. I'm wearing my Lululemon cute purple, I think this is called smoke lilac run outfit. And then my, can you see my shoe? <laughs> my Hoka ring cons. I ran my half marathon in a pair of Hoka ring cons and I'm, I think I'm going to run my marathon in my Hoka ring cons too. I'll get a new pair eventually. But as of today, I'm officially one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks out from my marathon, AKA how many days? 55 days, which is crazy. Orange County actually shut down their beaches and closed their beaches entirely. So we're not quite as south as Orange County, but just to give you a little bit of indication of the like safety precautions that they're taking. All right, we just got to the beach. Pretty much no one's here, obviously. <laughs> well, yeah. Honestly, it's gonna be kind of nice because I don't have to dodge as many people. Whoa! That's a big old wave. Right, about halfway done with this run. It's been very chill, very calm. It's still just kind of like lightly raining out here. The path has been super clear compared to normal, which is of course nice. Uh, not as many people to kind of like, you know, maneuver around. So yeah, just heading back and just happy that the weather has been pretty decent considering there's a Hurricane Hillary on, their, on its way. All right, we survived. I ended up going 11 miles. There was like a decent amount of people out there. Not a lot, like just chilling on the beach, of course, but there was a decent amount of people walking around. Saw a few other runners. 11 miles done. That was actually my second 11 miler for the week. Second week in a row of hitting a 30 mile week, which is huge for me. Huge like volume win. Um, I had been at 25 mile weeks for like a month. And then last week I hit my first 30 miler and then not having a second 30 miler. So slowly but surely ramping up my overall volume. Got a nice latte. The rain has picked up a bit now and we actually just got an alert on our phones. Brandon kind of freaked out. <laughs> oh, it said, wait, why don't I have it? Oh, here it is. It says earthquake detected, drop cover, hold on, protect yourself. So, I mean, I can see why he freaked out. Like, look, like that looks legit. That looks scary. But I don't know where it happened. Like Ojai, California, you saw? Yeah, I came to Huh? I came to what? I came to oh, yeah. I was taking Ollie out to go potty, and we were like almost back up, and Brandon like was coming flying out of the apartment. Like he was coming to try to find me, he said, because he was going to come die with me. So I think, I think that's kind of romantic. Plan for the rest of the day is. I'm actually going to finish up my pre and postnatal cert that I have been working on for way too long, but I more seriously started studying recently. So I'm like at 80% done. So I think I'll be able to finish it today. 
and then I will officially be pre and postnatal certified. So if you are a newly pregnant person or you have like recently given birth and you need a coach, check me out. So bad don't be like me so I'm wearing them right now but I just finished my pre postnatal <laughs> certifications are I the way I'm talking just so so bad finished my pre postnatal certification so I am officially certified to work with pre and postnatal um, women a lot of times people are like what does pre and postnatal even mean so prenatal means that you are pregnant Okay, that means you have not given birth yet, but you are with child. You are pregnant. Uh, postnatal means you have delivered your child. Postnatal, postpartum. And that means that you were pregnant, but you're no longer pregnant, but you just, you basically have given birth. Okay, so that's what the difference is. It's about, it's almost 7.30. I think we're gonna get urban plates for dinner. And I'm probably gonna take these out. I've had them in for about an hour and never so bad. Also, hurricane update. Still nothing crazy. I, obviously, certain areas are getting it worse than others. We're pretty close to the beach and it's just been raining all day. Like, it reminds me of like a rainy day in Michigan. If you're from Michigan, like, you know when it rains, usually it rains like all day long. So, that's kind of been how it's been today. Um, not like nothing crazy as far as winds go. It's been pretty pretty tame for us, thankfully. We still have power, so let's hope that that remains the same. I think it's probably gonna get worse later, like throughout the night, I don't know. But so far, we're doing fine. So I'm going to get started on some client work for the day. I still have to work on the special freebie that I have for you guys today. I need to lift and I also need to create some social media content um, and then whatever else the day brings. Um, my run today was not great, honestly. <laughs> I went out and I set a time goal for myself to run for an hour. I ended up going like a little bit over five miles and I was just like struggling to keep my heart rate down today. Um, it was an easy run easy effort run um, and so I was trying to keep my heart rate below uh, 160 ideally I like to keep it below 150 and it was just a struggle today so I didn't feel the greatest the Sun is back out though um, so I don't know if maybe just like the heat and like the change in the weather and stuff is playing a role at all but regardless still got it done I'm excited to get a lift in today I'll also will kind of take you guys along for that and then I'm going to share a little bit of insight into my philosophy and perspective behind combining running and lifting and like how I approach a double trading day as today is for me. All right, it's time to lift. I'm so excited. I still get so excited for my strength training sessions um, and I've still just been using my apartment gym and there's no one in here right now. But basically my goal during marathon training is to do a full body split for strength training. So what that essentially means is I'm hitting everything during my strength training as opposed to doing a body part split like 
hamstrings and glutes on one day and then like shoulders and chest on another day and really the reasoning for that is just because i don't have time i'm not in the gym five days a week because my priority right now is running so i'll talk more about that in a second after my workout i'm gonna like go through kind of like like i said my strategy behind hybrid training and combining running and lifting um but first let's get this workout done Go forever, go for eons. Friend like you on, you don't be on. Pull up in the Tesla, Elon. When I was a kid, I was a phenom. When I was a kid, I was a beast. I pull up, then I be gone. See ya, see ya, see ya. Be gone. See ya, see ya, see ya. Be gone. Thumbing through the blues, no BB King. Back to back shapes, so I'm just looking for the ring. I wake up, I brush my teeth. I wake up, I ball two three. I wake up like, ooh, that's me. Brand new car, like, ooh, that's clean. Track suit pins, don't wear no jeans. I'm athletic, count up a hundred like calisthenics. Talking about a bag, you got bad credit. New MX, we don't use debit. Calling, brand new discs, keep calling. Tell them, bring them through, need all them. Four whole kids still balling. I just get up and I zoom. I don't need proof on the proof. I be way up in the moon. I'm looking down on you. Hey, nigga, I'm proud of you. Stack money a mile or two. I might go forever, go for eons. Friend like you on, you don't be on. Pull up in the Tesla, Elon. When I was a kid, I was a phenom. When I was a kid, I was a beast. I pull up, then I be gone. See ya. See ya, see ya, be gone. See ya, see ya, see ya, be gone. I'm on a run and you better know. I'm in a know and you better know. I'm here to stay and you better know. I'm at the table, I never fall. I'm at the table, I'm up again. I'm at the table, I'm here to win. Don't cook a record, don't come again. Please, I just need what I need. I collect for my seeds. Would've thought my name tree. tree. I pick up and I leave. In my pocket I be. I don't like to be seen. I just get up and I zoom. I don't need proof on the proof. I be way up with the moon. I'm looking down on you. Hey nigga, I'm proud of you. Stack money a mile or two. I might go forever, go for eons. Friend like you on, you don't be on. Pull up in the Tesla, Elon. When I was a kid, I was a phenom. When I was a kid, I was a beast. I pull up, then I be gone. See ya. See ya. See ya. Be gone. See ya. See ya. That was such a good workout. It felt so good, not only to lift, but also to move explosively and think about power that's something that have, i have for sure not focused on in my training in like recent years like doing things like jumping plyometric movements that felt really good to do that's for sure going to be something i continue to do with my training i wanted to chat with you guys about like i said my perspective and approach to hybrid training and just like some questions you can ask yourself if you want to start hybrid training the first thing i always say to ask yourself is what is my primary goal so right now since i am training for a marathon running then would be my primary goal that does not mean that lifting is not a goal at all it just simply means it's a secondary goal and when it comes to what i'm going to prioritize running is being prioritized over lifting because I have a race coming up. Now, if I was in a different season of life and I wasn't, like I have been, right? Like I wasn't training for anything um, as far as like training for a race, then that could be different, right? Like if you think about the beginning of this year, my primary goal was to get strong. I was trying to put on muscle tissue. I was still doing some cardio, but wasn't running a whole lot. Um, I was doing more like Stairmaster sessions, uh, running here and there, but my primary goal for sure was strength training. Um, so that's just kind of an example of what you have to ask yourself and that will help lead your training and like how you're going to 
prioritize your week and like structure your week when it comes to your workouts. The second thing you need to ask yourself is how much time do you have? So it's no doubt that hybrid training, you're trying to balance two things, right? It obviously would be a bit easier if you were like only focusing on lifting or only focusing on running. But if you're like me and you wanna do both things, then you have to be really good with time management. And you know, sometimes that means you have to start your days earlier. Maybe it means you have to um, end your days later. It also may mean that like your lifts need to be shorter amount of time. Like for example, today my lift was about 30 minutes long and before like when I was prioritizing lifting my lifts could be anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half that's definitely not what like my situation is right now um, for example this morning I had an hour long run and then this evening I did a 30 minute strength training session so you just have to be real with yourself and say okay how much time do I realistically have to devote to my training sessions for the week and then again from there that can help you structure what your your workouts will look like the third question you have to ask yourself is what your training age is or in other terms like what is your current fitness level if you are a brand new newbie beginner i would not say to immediately start training for a marathon and also incorporate strength training um, i would say to first you need to build up both of those things gradually for beginners i would consider someone a beginner who let's say they can walk for 30 minutes straight but you may not be able to run for 30 minutes straight you may be like a more novice uh runner and same thing with strength training like if you just if maybe you've only been lifting for six months to a year um i would say as you start approaching a year you're starting to become more into like that intermediate level but it also depends on like the type of programming you're doing have you ever followed a plan before or are you just someone who follows like random workouts that you find on instagram or tiktok like what has your training looked like and again the answer to that question like how what your current fitness level is what your experience is with running or your experience with lifting um, or maybe you are experienced in both of those things but you haven't been doing them recently um, which lucky you you'll probably experience a lot of like of those newbie gains um, newbie gains can happen for people who are detrained experienced people so let's say you just haven't been consistent or maybe you're someone who you recently gave birth and you're trying to get back into things um, and you've been cleared and all that good stuff by your doctor um, you will most like, likely be in that group that will be able to progress a bit faster okay so once you've answered all those questions then it comes down to okay well, what do my workouts look like like how should i organize it how should i structure my week and again i will say this is my personal approach my professional opinion um you could ask another coach out there or someone else and they may have a totally different answer for you but this is my page and this is that's the only thing i can speak from right so um there is a school of thought out there that says to keep your hard days hard and your easy days easy so what that would look like for you know hybrid training running and lifting example would mean that you do an easy run in you know the morning and you just you keep it easy that day right and then a heart keep your hard days hard would be like you do a hard like tempo run or um, like a track workout or hill sprint like a hard high intensity you're pushing speed type run workout and then you also lift on the same day i personally like to do it differently though i like to lift on my easy run days and i also like to keep my lifts towards the beginning of the week as far away from like my long run as possible and then i keep my like if if i'm doing a workout like meaning like a, a track workout or a tempo run um like a hard run day i like to only do the run on that day if i can so i've been aiming for two to three strength training sessions per week right now realistically it's been more like two um and i've been keeping those closer to the beginning of the week so like on monday and tuesday i would do my lift and then that means I have Wednesday, Thursday. Sometimes I've been doing my long run on Friday the past couple weeks because we've been going out of town, but usually my long run is done on Sundays. So if you can see, like that means I get my lifts done earlier in the week and then I have all those days to kind of recover in case I am sore from my lifting so that I can go into my long run feeling as good as possible. My approach to lifting right now is to try to at least, you know, maintain my strength as much as possible. I do think that with running so much, it's it's a bit inevitable that you may lose some strength and some 
uh, like muscle in general, but you could also just attribute that to the fact that I'm not lifting as much, right? I'm lifting two days a week, whereas before I was lifting between four to five days per week. All that to say is I'm not necessarily pushing for PRs in the gym. That also does not mean that I am going uh, low weight, high rep either. That is not my approach at all to strength training. Um, I think that's a really misunderstood part of, of like hybrid training and combining the two. People think that, oh, you're a runner, you need to do high rep, low weight. And it's like, no, you're a runner, you still need to build strength and muscle because that is what's gonna help keep your body healthy and protect your joints and your knees. So this next point is pretty related. You have to ask yourself, are you going to be doing same session workouts or are you gonna do separate sessions? So my example for today is I did separate sessions, meaning I ran in the morning and I had a block of time that I was able to rest and recover and then I lifted in the evening. For some of you, you may be limited on time. Um, you may uh, work away from home. You may have kids, you may have whatever going on and maybe you have to do your lift and your run in the same session. That again kind of goes back to the question of like, what do I realistically have time for? Um, and in that case, again, it just comes down to like, okay, are you preparing for a race right now? If so, I would do your run at the beginning of the session and then end with like a short, maybe 20, 25 minutes of strength training. And if you're not training for a race right now and you do want to prioritize uh, your lifting, then start with your lift in that same session and then end your lift with your run. And that will really just help manage your fatigue so that whatever your primary goal is, you have your most amount of energy going into it and you're not fatigued from doing the other discipline before and meaning the other discipline that's not your primary goal at the time. And the last tip I have is when it comes to structuring your strength training, ask yourself if you are going to do a full body split or if you're gonna do a body part split. So. For me personally, what I've really been enjoying lately is actually doing a full body split. Again, this comes down to the fact that I'm not in the gym four to five times per week lifting, so it doesn't make sense for me to do a body part split, meaning like back and biceps, chest and shoulders, glutes and hamstrings, quads, like separating it like really specifically like that. Since I'm only lifting about two times per week right now, it makes a lot more sense for me to do a full body split. And during that full body split, I am doing my best to try to hit every single muscle group. Um, I also kind of break it down by the foundational movement patterns. So that would be like your squat, your hinge, your push movement, your pull movement. I try to include like a single leg movement if I can. And then anything extra on top of that would be like some core work, some like rehab work. So if I need to do maybe some some work on my hip flexors or my adductors or my calves, then I'll sprinkle those in um, at the end usually. And then just remember that it's okay to experiment just because this is the way that I'm approaching my hybrid training and the way I'm approaching my marathon and lifting schedule. It doesn't mean that you have to do it that way. You can try something else and see if it will work better. I think the internet sometimes can be really scary because so many people, and I'm even like guilty of this, we're always like, this is the wrong way to do it. This is how you're supposed to do it. And I hope, at least for me, the goal behind that is never to shame anyone or to like scare people into like, oh my God, I'm doing things wrong. It's always from this place of help, trying to help educate. However, I think because of that kind of culture behind social media that peop people get a little bit scared to maybe try something different and like see if it works for them. Um, and I think there's a lot of value in just trying things and maybe you fail and maybe it doesn't work out, but like, that's okay. You can learn from that and then it'll better help you decide on like where to go from there. So don't be afraid to experiment because your training is yours. Now I'm going to wrap up this video and basically just real quick share my kind of secret project that I have been working on for you guys. I have created a free eight week hybrid training program. It is more targeted towards beginners and intermediates. If you're someone who has historically been a lifter, like a strength trainer, and you want to get into running, um, or if you're a new runner, or if you're someone new to the whole hybrid training thing, you're like, I want to do this, but I don't know how to combine. I don't know what makes sense. Um, 
then this is for you. I 100% know my value as a coach and a fitness professional. However, I think that financials and like monetary aspects can get in the way of people being able to find a good quality program out there. There's an abundance of free programs out there that maybe aren't that great. Um, so I hope that this free program can provide some solid value to you and be a good starting point. So if you need to change things, you need to move things around, that's totally fine. Um, I wanted to do this for fun and also to kind of like challenge myself in a way and be like, hey, like, cause like this idea came to me and I was like, that would actually be so cool. And it came to me because I had so many people messaging me on Instagram, like, oh my God, I'm training for my first race this year because of you. Like I have been loving keeping up with your running journey. And I love that you still live and da da da. And I got I got like a few of those messages, and I was like, that is so cool and so special. And like, I'm happy that I could inspire people to that extent to like sign up for their first 5K or 10K or even half marathon. But even some of you out there like are doing your first half marathons and like that impact. I'm like, wow, like I had that impact. That's so cool to me. And it takes a lot of courage to sign up for those races, especially if you have not historically been a runner. Um, and so I just kind of got my brain thinking and I was like, what can I like do to like give back and help some of you guys uh, with your training so that you're not lost. Um, and this is kind of what I settled on. So it is a free eight week program, eight week hybrid program. And again, it is aimed more so at like that beginner runner. Um, so if you're someone who has like been running for years, you like did cross country in high school, this may not be for you, um, but maybe you know someone who could benefit from it. So if so, like share it with them, like, you know, download it and, and give it to them. It's free. So um, I hope this was helpful. I'm so excited about this. I wouldn't be creating this video if it weren't for the people out there who support me. And trust me, I know like I am a baby person in this social media world, but it's not always about the numbers. It's about, like I said, the impact. And it's about like people truly changing their lives and doing courageous things because of me, uh, at least to a certain extent, because I inspired them. And like that to me is so special. So. Thank you all for being here and thank you for your support as always. And I'm going to wrap up this video here. So if you enjoyed it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on TikTok. That wraps up episode two of Strength to Endure. And I will see you guys in episode three.